like to welcome you to another episode of Community Profiles. Community Profiles is our effort to introduce to you pivotal personalities who make a high impact upon the quality of life in our community. Today, we have a very special guest for you. I'm excited over her presence, and I know that over the course of the next several minutes, you will be both benefited and blessed by what she has to share with us. Her name is Madeline Quintine Baton, and she currently serves as the Commissioner of Human Services for the Town of Babylon. Ms. Baton, thank okay. you so much for coming. Thank you. And being our guest um, today. It's my pleasure. Listen, there is so much that we have to talk about. Yes. And uh, for those who are in the audience who have mm -hmm. a little longevity and a few years, I'm sure they recognize you. And before right. we go into your specific biography, I want the entire audience to know that you were the homecoming queen yes. of Amityville Memorial <laughs> High, High School, School back in the year 1972. 72. 72. That was yes. my graduating year. Yes. And so I'm happy to have not only the Commissioner of Human Services, yes. but the homecoming queen oh. of 1972 from Thank Amityville you. Memorial High School. Thank you. Listen, let's talk a bit okay. about um, the road that you have traveled yes. to where you are now. And I want to begin here because you represent, you are the latest feature mm -hmm. in a family that has given legendary service yes. to our community, yes. beginning with your father and your mother and your aunt. Tell our audience a bit about that. All right, well, my father, Erwin Quintine, and God rest his soul, did five years this past April 11th mm -hmm. that he's best, and my mother, Dolores Quintine, and my aunt, Rosemary Deering. My mother and father have been a pivotal part in my growing up and in my life. Uh, I have to say they paved the way for me to be where I am today. So I'm, I'm grateful for them because they gave me a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for them going to all those meetings, uh, when we were in high school and, every, and, and through, all through elementary school, and them going to all the meetings, and I used to say, I am not going to all these meetings when I get older. And what am I doing? Going same, to all the I'm meetings. Up, yeah, so thing, yeah. my father kind of instilled in us that, you know, community is important. Um, you have to give back. You have to be there. You have to join different organizations in order to be involved. If you don't join, then you're not involved, then you're not helping. So our youth, uh, like the pivotal point in which was in their lives, a lot of the guys that I went to school with, coming knocking on the door two and three o'clock in the morning, Mr. Quintine, Mr. Quintine, we need your help, we need your help. And my father never turned his back exactly, on yeah. anybody. And the same goes for my mother. So they were always there. And if I could be even a piece mm -hmm. of what the two of them had to offer mm -hmm. the community of Amityville, then my job, I say, has been well done. Sure. So I'm, I'm excited that I had them to look, look after or mm -hmm. look to, you know, towards the future mm -hmm. of what I'm going to do and what I'm setting out to do. So this is where it all comes from. It started with them instilling in me and my brothers and sisters, yes. and this is where I want to lead and, and move on. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I so often say, and I mm -hmm. so well remember your father mm -hmm. growing up here as a teenager in Amityville. Yes. He was the Eldridge Cleaver yes. of North <laughs> Amityville. Amityville. Yes. He was a combination of Malcolm yes. X, yes. Martin Luther King, yes. uh, H. Rap Brown, yes. and Stokely Carmichael. All rolled, all rolled in up into one. He yes. was our local militant leader, our yes. civic uh, resource, yes. and so and we miss him greatly. We yes. miss him greatly. I say of your mother, she gave me my first job with mm -hmm. EOC. Yes. Um, I served and directed the free lunch program all right. All right out of EOC. And yes. so uh, we're just so very happy yes. that you're continuing a tradition that yes. they started a long time ago. Now, many of you, many of our audience recognize okay. mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. from the annual Amityville day. Parade yes. Day. So talk to us a bit about that okay. and other community okay. involvements that you've had okay. over the years. Well, my mother, uh, Dolores Quintine and Miss Maddie Angus were, of course, working for EOC. 35 years ago, because to June 6th of this year, 2009, would have been, will be the 35th anniversary of North Amityville Community Festival Day. And I have been a part of it all of those 35 years. Okay. <laughs> and I just, I guess about the past six or seven years, um, started becoming the, the chairperson. And I've, you know, we got together, we got our little committee, and 
Amityville Day is, has just become like a pivotal point in trying to bring community together, families, children, young children, older adults, older children, if you will, and just try to just have something that's saying that's our own. And we wanted to bring the churches involved. We wanted to have all the churches involved. We wanted to have all the, the, the political, you know, involved. We have all of, uh, all of the families, the mom and pops, the, and everyone, just to come out and come and have a good time. It wasn't to, to be about anything else other than to just get together, you know, fraternize with one another, you know, patronize the little mom and pop shops that they were selling things, the mm -hmm. vendors. Um, we have the, the children on the rides. Um, we have entertainment. And, and we honor those who have left and come back and want to give back into the community. And we honor. So it's, it, it was a great thing, and it's a great thing for me to be involved in that. And every year, and now this being our 35th year, mm. 35 years for Amityville Day, Amityville, um, it, it just it brings me to tears. Okay, yeah. okay. One of the great features of Amityville mm -hmm. Day is the mm -hmm. participation, as you said, yes. of local public officials. Yes. You always included the local bands from yes. the various communities yes. that North Amityville touches, Copay, yes. East Farmingdale. How have you been able to corral all mm -hmm. of that community involvement? Mm -hmm. Take us through what you have to go through to make sure that the bands and the people and the public officials yes. are all in place. And at one time, you marched, the parade started down in the village. In the village, And made right. its way up to North Amville. Right. Now you start on Harrison yes. and make your way back to Bolden, uh, Bolden, Bolden Mac Park. Park. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about what is involved okay. in coordinating mm -hmm. all of those various elements. Well, I have to say I got a great committee. The committee is awesome, and everybody is broken down to a section of what they are part of. The parade committee is run by my mother, Dolores Quintine, okay. um, who just has a handle on being able to reach out. We send out letters mm -hmm. to everyone, and we send a parade application, and we talk to the various schools. So we try to get all the, van the bands in uh, North Amityville, Wine Dench, um, Copaig, Lindenhurst, Farmingdale, we reach out to all. We even reached out to Hempstead and Uniondale bands, and, and some of them have uh, come and patronize our, our parade, so, which was wonderful. So we reach out, we talk to them, we send out the letters, they respond back, and it has been great because they look forward the kids in the band, they look forward mm -hmm. to North Amityville Day. So if they don't see the letter coming, they call us and okay. want to know, are you still having Amityville Day this year? Yes, we are. So we reach out. We reach out to all the churches. We reach out to all the businesses. We reach out to uh, the community people at large and just hope that we get back a good response. And normally we do. And as you, you know, have seen in past years and uh, hopefully this year again, too, that we have a great response from the community that have come out. Well, I know that our Sunday School Ministry looks forward to, yes. to hearing from your committee. And yes. each year uh, they participate and it's something that they anxiously look mm -hmm. forward to. Listen, this is Bishop Andy C. Luter, and I'm coming to you with another installment of Community Profiles. Our guest today is the Commissioner of Human Services for the Town of Babylon in the person of Madeline Quintine Baden. Don't touch that dial. We'll be back in just a few minutes with the continuation of our conversation with Madeline Quintine Baton.